Hello, hello, my friends. Hello, DLD friends. Welcome to our 27th DLD Sync Show. It's amazing. Thank you for being with us for such a long time. It's it's almost a year we started this for, new format and somehow it's successful and you're part of it. Thank you, thank you. Today we have an amazing new topic um, at the sink and a topic will, which will follow us, but I'm sure the next years. It's on Europe. Who of you, my friends, would call himself, herself an Europe activist? Who of you, is engaged for the fabulous vision of Europe? Who is doing something that Europe gets closer, gets more innovative, more interesting, more together? I'm, I'm not sure if every one of you raises his hand. I, will, I want to change this. We today, we talk about a bold vision the idea of the new European Bauhaus. The new European Bauhaus. Think of it. In case you haven't seen the DLD All-Star event a month ago, where Commissioner von der Leyen talked about this initiative. But not only she, this amazing philosopher, climate activist, um, doer, thinker, he mentioned climate change in the early 70s. John Schellenhuber, he spoke also at DLD All-Stars about it. Bjarke Ingels, this architect activist, spoke about the Bauhaus. Maria Gabriel, commissioner um, for innovation in Europe, spoke about it. And Hans Ulrich, the amazing art connector, always on the intersection of technology, business, art, a whirlwind of, of making connections. They all spoke about this new European Bauhaus. So what it is, it is, is it? It's described by President von der Leyen, by Commissioner President von der Leyen, as a creative and interdisciplinary initiative that drives the green transformation of our continent. The green, very necessary green transformation of our continent in order to build a future that is sustainable, inclusive, and beautiful. Yes, beautiful. It's important. Beautiful. The new European Bauhaus sets out to support and facilitate innovations at the crossroad of science, technology, business, and art. It could be a wonderful vision, and it's really, really necessary. Of course, it sounds a bit vague, what I just said. How can we turn a vision into reality? To talk about the questions, to begin the conversation about a stronger conversation about the sustainable future of Europe, we invited two experts and friends with an outstanding track record of fostering innovation and creativity, actively getting things on the road. They are doers, not talkers. Please welcome two friends of DLD, Francesca Bria. She is the president of the newly created Italian National Innovation Fund and member of the new European Bauhaus High Level Roundtable. She will explain what it is later. Francesca is also an honorary professor at the University College of London, a member of the European Commission High Level Expert Group on Economic and Societal Impact, of research and innovation, and she was the former chief chief technology chief digital technology um, of the city of um, Barcelona. Um, Francesca is amazingly smart. You will see it in a minute. She is not only smart; she has humor. She is pretty. She is a perfect example for the new Europeans, for the active engagement um, engaged friends of Europe. Imagine, imagine, my friends, getting 27 countries under one umbrella of a vision, of a bold vision. What a task. And I'm so happy that Helmut Schönenberger, my good friend Helmut Schönenberger, the CEO of Unternehmertum, 
Europe's largest and highly successful entrepreneurship center, um, is also with us. He is also joining this vision. He's a visionary. He, you know, you know, probably you know all. He brought Flixbus, Lilium, Silonis, many more unicorns out of a cradle of the cradle of Unternehmertum into reality. So why shouldn't these two persons bring the visions of a European Bauhaus, of the new European Bauhaus, also from a small cradle, from a bold vision into reality? So my friends, the floor is yours. What brought you to Europe? Francesca. Right. Hello, Sefi, and hi, everyone. It's really great to be here, and uh, this topic is obviously really inspiring. So for me, there is um, a first uh, big issue that is why we are doing this project now. So why this is the right moment to project a forward-looking radical vision of sustainable Europe, which is going to be carbon neutral, that's going to be more inclusive and more democratic. And, uh, and I think we do need at the moment to have pragmatic, but really radical ideas that will get us out of the multiple crises that we are living in. And of course, one is a big uh, crisis. I mean, one of the biggest crises in living uh, memory, which is the health crisis and the pandemic, but also the relationship uh, of the health crisis and our relationship with nature and the ecological collapse and the climate crisis, which is very strong. And uh, this relationship between us and nature is extremely un unbalanced at the moment. And uh, I believe that crisis being pandemics, wars or moments of big troubles for humanity can fuel social imagination. So can help us think in big ways and, and can help us also, I think, giving a direction to the big transitions we are living. On one side, the uh, green transition, so the need to decarbonize the economy, uh, to transition to a renewable energy-based uh, uh, society and to a net zero world, and the digital transition. And how do we make the digital transition more democratic, more inclusive? So I think, uh, obviously, um, President van der Leyen said that the climate transition needs its own aesthetic, which is sustainability, style, inclusiveness. I mean, she effectively talks about um, beauty. But I also think, you know, one uh, real point about this project is making the cultural and social dimension of innovation and of the green transition very strong. And this can be um, a, a European touch to innovation, and uh, which I think we can discuss Helmut later, because I think I really believe that this question of um, what is the European touch to innovation, what it means innovation for Europe, what it means for our culture, for our history, and for our future, and how do we find our, how do we make the digital more European in a sense? I think it's going to be an important conversation. But I also think that digitization and the green transition, they pose uh, very big challenges in themselves, uh, very uh, big challenges of our times, and can only be tackled uh, through an interdisciplinary manner. So bringing together, so increasing the collaboration between arts, um, design, technology, and science. And uh, and I think this this um, bringing back the tradition of the Bauhaus uh, with the Bauhaus movement in the modernist era in the 1920s and 30s, we saw the science of ecology and design uh, kind of merging and laying the foundation for modernist architecture. And I think we have a lot to learn about this historical experience, but also we need to make this historical experience real today, uh, which means understanding what it means at the moment and also what needs to be changed, of course, from the original Bauhaus. One, one important element is the question of it, an education method. I mean, a school that is not a building, but that is a school that is really about 
changing the pedagogical uh, approach and the educational method. And I think education is going to be very strong in what we want to, um, to put forward. Uh, I think another element uh, that is going to be maybe two things I want to mention of uh, how I see it a bit different today. First of all, is that uh, we are going to try. So Steffi was asking what it is. And I think we actually at the beginning of this journey, we want to stay a little bit away from defining things too precisely. So I actually, I've been working for the European Commission many, many years as an advisor, as an expert, helping to shape some of, um, of the ancient programs. And, um, and I think on one side, it's absolutely powerful that the president of the European Commission is coming up with this uh, great uh, vision and with this idea, uh, tackling uh, Europe's most ambitious goal, which is the Green Deal. So making Europe climate neutral by 2050, coupling that with one of the biggest investment plan that we have seen in uh, maybe 50 years, which is the next generation EU and the climate deal within that. Um, we can remind that Europe is going to be investing 1.3 billion, a trillion, sorry, into this overall package and that 40% uh, uh, of this money will go to the green transition and 20% to the digital transition. And this is done with the European common debt. So there is a European common strategy with a direction that is common for all Europe. So it's, it's a huge target. At the same time, it's pretty top down, right? And we don't want this movement to become a top-down bureaucratic type of thing that defines uh, things in a kind of way that the European Commission knows how to do very well, right? In a kind of bureaucratic language, no. We want this to be a grassroots, diverse movement that brings together artists, engineers, technologists, the design schools, the art schools, economists, the environmental movement, the youth movement, students, cities and regions, uh, industry, the technologies, the startups, I mean, really the kind of like the, our talent, our creative minds together and also tap into the multitude of existing initiatives which are already making this vision real. So, for example, the first part Helmut, just cut me off if you want to interact because I don't know how, how, how long we have to speak. I'm Italian, so I have to kind of like go. But I will, I will, I will close my first uh, um, speech uh, like now just by saying that I think it's important there is this bottom-up element. We want to talk to the citizens, we want to make democratic, and we want to tap into the bottom-up creativity of what's already there. Uh, the second point is this is not going to be one place. This, I think, in my vision at least, has to be an, a region, regional network. So it has to be a network of different connected spaces. So maybe different from the original Bauhaus that was centered in, uh, in a few places. Um, and, and, and really be this kind of backbone of the future sustainable, innovative, digital and inclusive Europe. So with this vision, we're going to have to shape it together. It, and I think it's maybe good that it's not already there, but it has to be defined from the ground up. Cool, Francesca. Uh, so thank you for, for giving this framework and also for um, uh, showing so much energy, because I think that's also a part of, of the Bauhaus is that we are active, uh, we are energetic, and that uh, yeah, we, we, we really um, push things forward. And you also said um, yeah, this it's not only a top-down initiative, but also a bottom-up initiative. And I think that's where um, myself and my ecosystem is coming in. So um, as Steffi already said, um, we are quite active here in Munich. We are building a very strong ecosystem. And as Francesco said, there's this urgency that there's so many challenges around with COVID-19, but also with, with digitalization, with the uh, demographic change. And so there's a lot of pressure going on, but it's not, I think, only 
this pressure we all experience, <clears throat> but there are also great chances around. So I think it's it's also a, a time of opportunity now and also a time for being optimistic. We see so many great technology around, like all the digital tools, like 3D printing, so like quantum computing. So there, there are so many new tools we have, so many uh, new possibilities. So also methods, how we want to work. Uh, just remember, uh, like agile working or now with, with distributed teams, what we experience here in, in COVID-19. So that's what we have, big challenges, but also great opportunities. And so that's where, where now um, the Bauhaus movement comes in and where we as, as the Munich ecosystem really love this idea to have this sustainable perspective, um, bring Europe together and be inclusive and think of all this um, uh, creative and interdisciplinary aspects Europe has and it's a very diverse continent with, with great people, with uh, different um, ideas and concepts and, and competences. And uh, our mission here in Munich is to, on one side, um, be part of this great European ecosystem, um, but also um, do our homework <laughs> in Munich and also yeah, help that the new next generation of innovators, of creators, of entrepreneurs, of of designers come together and work on these new solutions and really come up with new solutions. And I think this is, Steffi, you said, and thank you for the invitation, Steffi, you said uh, we should be also critical. And I think a really critical point about Europe and what we also have to solve with the Bauhaus movement is to really um, get momentum and really um, uh, realize these solutions and scale them and make Europe be more beautiful and more attractive. And more known. I mean, I, I see Europe still as a big black hole. We, the three of us, we have an idea of Europe. We are well educated, we are, we are traveling, whatever. But um, I have no idea of Bulgaria. I have no idea of what's going on in the south of Italy. We talked about it. I have no, from the 27 states of Europe, nations of Europe, I maybe know 10. And as long as, as there are so many black holes, um, I think it's very difficult to, to make the vision real. And I think, we also are facing, our industry nations are facing a bold competition between the US and, and China, as you know. And I'm sure that there are many hard nests of innovations in Europe, which we, we have no idea about. You know, or the, the investors, the, the arts people, the scientists are connected but they are in their bubbles. I think we have to, it's really, it's our challenge to open up the nation, nationality, the bubbles of certain nations. We have to, in, I've been in Romania at a tech conference and there mm -hmm. were so many, many American investors who immediately took the talent out of Romania, of, out of Cluj and, and, and transferred them to the US. I think this 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 is is not good. We all have to know about Europe much more. We have to, um, yeah, Francesca. Yeah, no, I was gonna say that I totally agree because the twenty seven countries have such variety, uh, varieties of cultures, of histories, of political systems, and types of innovation. Which I think it's this diversity of Europe. It's the strength of Europe. So you do not want to get to a point where you start having this uniform idea of what innovation should be looking like, but you want to be able to scale, to scale mm -hmm. our potential. So we want to be able not only to say, okay, in the competition between the US and China, there is a third way, which is the European way to innovation. Yeah. That is not only our regulatory power that we know this is very strong. I say this all the time. Europe is not 
only there to say we can tax the companies, we can you know protect your rights, we can increase competition. Europe is also there to compete on technological innovation, but based on who we are. So our yeah. you know model of social economy, our culture, our design, our places, locations, what we our produce, value. what we are good at, values, yes. Yeah, and values. that's, you know, that, that means, I mean, this is a big challenge, Steffi, because this means that innovation is not just bigger, faster, and, uh, and cheaper, but innovation should be also something else. And that's, yeah. I think, that that is the big challenge of the, the European Bauhaus. But let me say one more thing. I think that it's pretty clear, as Helmut was saying, that the challenges are huge. I mean, you know, we have to decarbonize our industries. We have a, lot, a biodiversity crisis. We have to retrofit buildings. We have to make our cities greener and cleaner. We have to lessen the impact on concrete on the environment, shift to bioarchitecture. I mean, so many ideas we are already discussing in the new European Bauhaus Roundtable. But I am convinced that if we do not get to the actual people, to the young people, you know, like this, these young people, this young generation of Europe, they study about uh, the environment. They enroll in environmental study courses. They talk about sustainability. They know about sustainability and they protest for sustainability, but they don't know how they can bring those values into their daily life. How they can move, how they can help their cities to go in a net zero strategy, how they can eliminate waste, what they can do collectively or in their daily life to be part of this movement. I think this is going to be an enormous challenge because it's tapping into people's imagination, but also making it real. So into I, have I have an idea, and it has to yeah. do with you, Helmut. Helmut, Francesca, I don't know if you know of my audience. I don't know if you know that currently Helmut is building a fantastic pattern example for fostering creativity. And Helmut, I want mm. to ask you if the model of the Munich Urban Collab, you have to explain what it is, is valid to do to maybe you should open an um, an Cluj urban collab a Sophia urban collab what is the to you know this is a model to bring education science technology arts together can you explain it in a minute Helmut what are you currently working on with the background of bringing so many um, unicorns into the reality. What is mm. Munich Urban Collab? Please, please. It's, Steffi, the Munich Urban Collab is a place where people collaborate and really collaborate. And so this means that we have all the innovation people from the city in there, from large companies, from medium-sized companies, but also from academia. And what's for me most important, really the next generation of innovators. So all the young students. And so these people are on the same height, they respect each other and they start to really innovate with each other. And so we provide the space, the tools, the processes, we have own programs, we have funding schemes, mainly also from the private side, not, not state money, but really private money. And then people really start to work together and work on solutions. And uh, Steffi, you, you, you mentioned this great example that we, we have to, to know each other better. I think this is this, the first step, but I think what should be really the, the target for, for Europe is that we not only know each other, but that we collaborate with each other. And it's so fantastic. So I, it's, this morning I, I had a, a team here, it's called Kevasu, and they built uh, new robot systems. And the founding team is a real European team. So um, one of mm. the founders is a, a female student from Greece and um, the, the CTO is from Bulgaria. And I think this is Europe, that we really not only know each other, but that we work together and build teams and build the next generation. So Munich Urban Collab is a place where people come together and meet and really start the journey and build solutions. And it would be fantastic if we have this network of such places all over Europe to really also foster the exchange. So I Helmut, the commissioner Maria Gabriel, when we've done our first um, high level roundtable meeting, 
she talked about wanting to create actually she defined it a education for climate coalition which goes very much in the direction of what you just said so like all these places that are developing new uh, teaching methodology new pedagogical methods new way to build things and to scale up innovation and put this into a network and connect to schools which i think is a very important idea very important thing to do because also uh, we do lack some of the basic digital skills you know, to to uh, be able to thrive in this technological revolution. We also have a huge gender gap and uh, a lot of socioeconomic divides that we need to bridge. So I think it's important that this new European Bauhaus is not seen as something elitist, just pass me the word. I mean, it's not only about, you know, architects, designers and, uh, you know, artists making the world more beautiful, but it is really also going down to earth to understand how we solve the big um, environmental and social challenges of our times, how do we bring communities together, how do we talk to the underrepresented communities, uh, which you know need to be at the center, how do we make this global, which also bring in other countries that are not Europe, for instance, some people in the high level round table group from India, from other countries, they bring different perspective. I think this is very important. But this network vision that you have, Helmut, I think we need to bring this in because if we make it an educational <laughs> kind of tool, um, we can get into society. Uh, that is something we, 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 we have to do. And uh, probably Steffi knows this very well, but in my work as CTO of Barcelona, um, in my previous life, um, I used to really put, I mean, to say like, okay, smart cities have to be people first. And we experiment these large scale participatory movements in everything we were doing in the city to get people involved in decision making and to get people involved in the solutions that we prototype. And I think uh, cities are going to be a very critical point of this network because, I mean, think about, you know, if you are uh, doing, um, I don't know, prototyping some AI tools for mobility and you want to see what is the future for mobility, you're going to use the city as a kind of test bed to experiment um, electric, connected and green mobility. Uh, if you want to see, you know, some kind of um, new urban gardening and some uh, recycling, uh, prototyping, uh, experimental thing, you're going to do it in city. City is going is a different tier. Cities are a different tier in um, tackling the climate uh, crisis and so on. So I think we need to use the cities, which means also citizens, but it's broader than that. It's, this network of universities and uh, industry and stakeholders, the makers, the startups, the public administration as a laboratory for sustainable and democratic innovation. So bring the cities in and do the kind of things that you're doing in uh, Munich, but multiply that. And then, uh, Steffi, I think the interesting thing is going to be, I mean, for me, for example, one big question, I'm now running the National Italian Innovation Fund. We have 1.5 billion um, euros to invest in startup. Mm, compared to other countries like Germany and France, it's not much yet, but still for Italy, it's a very big leap, it's a very big change. And uh, we, um, and of course, this approach of arts-driven innovation, which we are, we are trying to see what it means, but let's say creative agency into innovation. So what it means when you are experimenting with quantum technology or with, um, uh, you said, AI or even with some biotech, and you are bringing in, in the industry, in the company, the artist, the designer, the creative in a residency or even just working with you to imagine I mean, to break some boundaries, as you said, multidisciplinarity, but to imagine where this technology is going to lead us. To, so to imagine the future, I think is a new type of tech transfer, of technology transfer, which is bringing in the artists and, um, and is bringing in this cultural dimension. I don't, I don't think this is only cultural. I think this can change our economic, I mean, our economy, our industry, the way we do innovation. So and I also want to see if we get more investment into this kind of places. If we can, um, you know, prototype these uh, new Bauhaus centers as new 
tech transfer methodology where we can draw investments and have the startups and the industry collaborate really with the artists and uh, the designers and the creative people. Francesca, I have a question for you. Do you like the name Bauhaus? If no, I think actually, of, yeah. I think of beton, as a, what's the English word for you know for this concrete, concrete. and concrete and and heavy um, architectures of the fifties, small apartments, bunkers. No, we have discussed this many times. I mean, now we actually have discussed it even in the in the group of uh, ambassadors, let's say, which actually is a diverse group of people. It's very interesting because you have the architects, as you said before. Yeah, you okay, have yeah. a call, a, yeah, like the architect. Then, you have. Uh, yeah. Yeah, Olafur, like the artists, you have the economists, you have activists, like climate activists, uh, young, young climate activists. And I mean, it's very diverse and it's very interesting to have this conversation like that. And we we said maybe we should call it the NEB, just to have different type of, you know, which is like uh, there is Europe, there is the uh, environment, there is. So there are other things that you can bring into the picture. And I think it has to go beyond also that imagination of the Bauhaus. So yeah. uh, yes, yeah. I mean, for example, the new with European um, laboratory, yes, laboratory. Yes. Wunderkammer or whatever, mm -hmm. alchemist exactly. Wunderkammer. Like Kona. with, yeah, with um, in the F FAZ, uh, we had a, we had a conversation with Nicholas Mack in FAZ, and he suggested like he was like. But let's don't use that metaphor. Let's look, for example, at the new Centre Pompidou. He was saying we need a Centre Pompidou for the digital and green age. Yeah. You know, yeah. something like that. And and it has, it has to be a, a, a building, I mean, a space where yeah. this imagination can thrive. Mentioning, yeah. mentioning the Centre Pompidou, was, was, which was the, the amazing miracle of the seven, architectural miracle of the 70s in the last century, um, I think, we, um, Europe needs role models. We it's really role models. It needs an optimistic narrative. Coming back to your collab, I don't, I'm, I don't say Munich urban collab. I say urban collab because it's, it's a model for me. We should promote it as an, as a role model for creativity, for getting things done, for collaboration. I think we have to. Yeah, I know, digitalization, mm -hmm. green, everything. Says, but it's connotated with work, with, uh, with, full, with angst, um, with difficulties. We have to get into an optimistic narrative. We have mm. to say, um, if we get the climate change, the world will be beautiful mm. again. It, 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 something like this. I'm, I'm an, not from the young generation, as you can see, but I'm an optimistic person and I, I want to get this young generation um, optimistic towards Europe. And I, I, I think in, in, yeah. in, at our university, so uh, our university, TUM has about 45,000 students and um, about a third um, are really interested in entrepreneurship. And so if you talk to the, the young generation, there's so much optimism and there's so much energy and Good i think yeah, and, and i think our our um job is to give them a great environment and enable them and so i, I think where, where we as europeans can be really make a leap forward and be much better is mm -hmm. to really f build an, an ecosystem and an optimal ecosystem for these young people to use their talent um, to use this energy and come up with these great solutions. And I think if you look at Europe right now, I don't see that. I see only a few places, um, and these are like DTU in, in Copenhagen or KTH in Stockholm or um, Alto, for example, or um, our university in Munich or maybe ETH, where really these young people are really fostered in a really great way. And, but this should be common sense in Europe. And if, if, we say, if we say, okay, our people are our greatest resource, so let's really work with them and respect them and enable them to come up with these great solutions. Because our duty, I think, is to, to help them to solve the problems. We 
in our generation, we can't solve every problem, but we can prepare the next generation to really do also a great job and solve the problems. And I, I think this generation is full of energy, full of great ideas, of optimism. And if we let them do and give them a great environment, I think they will succeed. And maybe Francesca, from on, on the negative side, I think where we really also have to get better is um, to uh, to to be more pragmatic. So you you are talking now of, of um, 1.5 um, um, billion euros you have for Italy. So our ecosystem, our startups attract per year over 1 billion. So only a private, mainly private money. Okay, and it's because there are many entrepreneurs and investors out there, and family offices who believe in the ideas, believe in the next generation. So we have to attract uh, these um, mm -hmm. um, people and, and these investors yeah. from Europe, from the world, and, and show them the great young teams, and then um, yeah, build the bridges so they can invest. And it's good to have state money in the game. And I think also the, the EU grants and everything, but this this could should be only a little bit of the oil in the machine, but uh, the, the, not more. And we, we need this private and 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 broad. Uh, yeah. Yes. Uh, no. Absolutely. I actually want to say a couple of things. So on the on the network, what we what we need. Uh, as Helmut, I, I think, as you rightly say, the research centers, the the kind of um, university research center labs is an important starting point. But also it should be merged, for instance, with places like the Saint Pompidou, like Arts Electronica, like ZKM, like Luma Foundation, like Triennale, like Maxi Museum, like our cultural centers, which are amazing. Uh, the foundations, many foundations in uh, in Europe. Oh, we have the dog. Usually we have kids coming in, like like she has the dog. Um, so we have the uh, the Triennale, the Venice Biennale, the the kind of Maxi uh, Museum in Italy, and the, and the banking foundations. They are all involved into into investing in this kind of arts driven technological and scientific innovation. So we need to bring these cultural places, also public cultural spaces in the mix. Uh, it is a very important addition, uh, like the Luma Foundation space is yeah. amazing where they have a Luma, you know, lab where they prototype new materials, new methods, they work with the community. Um, this kind of ideas that we are working on in the starts, in the European starts network is very strong network. And this has to go together with the research centers and the more kind of scientific research spaces in Europe. And then adding the cities. Because, for example, as I said also before, Barcelona is a laboratory for this kind of things. I mean, we have like the architectural center of Catalonia, the maker, the Fab City movement, the GSMA organizing the World Mobile Congress. We have a laboratory of, you know, creative spaces of innovation all around the city. We are prototyping technologies. I mean, it's an incredible hub for these things to happen. And that's what's attracting the young people. Uh, like, you know, innovative ideas, the things we are discussing, bringing forests into the cities. So not nature. So the right to nature, it's not only going to be going in the countryside. It's this new idea also Ram Kulas talks about not only smart cities, but smart countrysides. And Stefano Boeri says, we are going to build archipelagos of connected spaces and bringing forests into the urban centers. So really rethinking the way we live. The right to nature should be a right for all humans. The right to data. I mean, we, are, we have to innovate these concepts and then we want the creative minds to build on top of that new, process, new processes, new methods, new products, new services. And then I want to just get to the finance point. I think new, Europe now is doing a leap. We have to believe it. I mean, it is the moment for, I think, the European way, because, for instance, in VC, we are just investing this money, also public money, but attracting private capital, as you're saying, uh, not only from Europe, but also from abroad. The European Commission has just created the first venture capital fund run by the European Innovation Council. It's 9 billion. I think it's 
a lot. I mean, it's it's a good amount of money together with the um, the uh, European Investment Fund and European uh, Investment Bank. It's going to leverage uh, more money, and this is part of the big next generation EU, which we should celebrate as a real um, historical. I think moment to get us out of the crisis and regenerate our economy. So I think this is the moment and we need to make sure that these radical but forward looking innovative ideas uh, make it, you know, that we, 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 we are there to push this and push these methodologies like the one you're prototyping in Munich with a vision or where we want to get with the direction no, of like, what is the model that we're building for Europe? I think this is what this European, well, we Let's want to change do, the name, right? We want to change the name. Yeah, we want to change the yeah. name. I like the yeah. number two. Let's do the European leapfrog. The European you know, leapfrog. We, 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 I think we are, um, if, we, if it comes true, what we are talking about right now, it will be a bright, wonderful future full of inclusiveness, full of creativity, full of beautiness, which, which is an important part. But as you mentioned the cities, there were, were no Sofia, there were no Bucharest, there were no Warsaw. We have an Eastern part of Europe which lags behind. And I'm really convinced that we have to do kind of an innovation tour where we go to these cities, to these unknown, um, cities, unknown countries, um, mm -hmm. to, to trigger them. Because if you think about who are the programmers in, in the US, there are a lot of Romanians, a lot of Serbians, a lot of... Yeah, with whatever. great STEM yeah. skills. Yeah. Yes, and but they leave Europe in order to make more money somewhere else. So mm -hmm. we have to really focus on the talents in this European country and we have to give them an opportunity to stay in their country and to invent new things and to do the quantum leap we need in Europe. And yeah. therefore, again, I think we have to really um, um, count on role models. We have to count on new narratives. We have to... Um, music. Music is such a unifying... Mm -hmm. Um, element. I didn't hear anything about a new European music um, scene. We should we should trigger them. We should trigger a new press narrative. If you read um, European papers or even the newsletter, I subscribed to ten to twelve European newsletters. They're, either they are greedy. They say, oh, this startup gets more money, and this, and they mm -hmm. are only talking about money and funding but not about the bigger picture or they they are very um small um, um small focused so i think there's a lot to do and we have to to find the people who are doing it who are getting really into the action and um as you know i i'm preaching a little bit we are doing from dld we want to travel europe and define the hotbeds of innovation where are the uh, good things in or the interesting things in Sofia, whatever. And I will let you know. Well, we can uh, say that we candidate as Italy, the, the yes, Italian good. South. So we're going to yes. start in Puglia. Yeah, in, uh, we Bari. In Puglia. <laughs> yeah. Yes, we do. We I love meeting Puglia. and you will be thrilled yes, uh, to I'm discover sure. the type of innovation also linked to food, linked to energy aerospace, like robotics, so many yeah. things are happening Super. in the South and really interesting and, and we take very, very Italian. <laughs> we take mm -hmm. Helmut with us, we take the role models of, of um, Finnish startups. We, we, you know, we have to do the interconnectivity. Mm -hmm. I would love to take Daniel Wiegand from Lilium, who is from Munich, who is going to um, open a SPAC in, and, and uh, doing an IPO with the first German SPAC in, in America. We take him to Bari and he uh -huh. should tell his story. And then we ask him to go with us to Porto or wherever. I think it's important that we do this kind of things. Exactly. These are great examples so for Lilium or also ESA Aerospace, all these high tech companies, they are already mm -hmm. totally European. Mm -hmm. So if you look yeah. at, at their teams so they have um, 30 or 40 nationalities in their teams and they come all over europe or, or the, even the world and i think we, yeah, we we have to build these european champions and 
um, really on one side I think about this broad base, but also uh, build up these lighthouses and really great European new companies uh, which are really successful, really scale and be really also the new leaders from the world market in these fields. And this I think is so important also to to uh, be um, uh, competitive, stay competitive, and also uh, be. Um, on a technological field, um, autonomous uh, also in comparison to the US and and China. So I think we, we really have to collaborate on this um, European level and build um, all these great companies in, in all our nations all over Europe. No, absolutely. I mean, this is a, this is a topic I'm really passionate about because this uh, strategic autonomy or sovereignty of Europe in technology also would mean that we can be um, that we can have sovereignty which is political and economic and is something that absolutely we need to do because this digital humanism that Europe can offer to the world I think is also a global vision so for example I do not believe we have to get into a cold war kind of mentality yes of like decoupling which also he is, uh, is is a bit troubling in supply chain and in the redefinition of the global economy but actually for the digital world we do need um i mean it's it's too interconnected and we do need to set democratically agreed standards and i think on that front europe is doing super well i mean we're like proposing well, like we are the first, um, the first continent that is proposing the new constitution for the digital age, which is about people first. So we are starting from fundamental rights and from our values, and we are building a possible constitution with standards and with a technological world that's gonna benefit people and the environment. So we should we should stress this more. I think I feel all the time the narrative is we are lagging behind because we don't have the companies, we don't have the champions. Fine, let's try to invest more and have technologies which is made in Europe in the frontier, in the strategic value chain of the future, which actually is to build this environmental transition, you know, uh, electric batteries, hydrogen, renewable energy, AI, quantum computing, data, and so on, and microprocessors getting back biotech. that knowledge biotech. in Europe, biotech, biotech yeah. exactly. And but let's strengthen also. Let's emphasize the fact that we are still Europe. I mean, we have a social market economy. We have a strong social model. We have a strong foundation to build a more inclusive and democratic future. And really, let's make this a strength. Let's uh, be a but leader what, into yeah. defining it, that. It's so nice said, Francesca. It's so nice said. It's easy said, as you can no, imagine. No, but, but, but it's what? not easy to do. It's not easy, yeah. easy to do, eh? Because we have constructed Europe over time. Political yes. Europe it hasn't been easy to make. And it is difficult to get here to get our rights, environmental, labor, gender, I mean, this is not easy. So it's we have, easy. we have, it's only we, yeah. Easy said. But what what makes you sleepless in this bunch mm -hmm. of not easiness? There are so many things. But what is the first thing, Helmut and Francesca, you would <laughs> change immediately? What are you working on? No, I've already said because I mean I've been obsessed with this like Europe becoming a digital colony. So you know all my work in the in the last years in Barcelona was like we're gonna build an alternative at the city scale where we empower citizens. So we we work a lot on democratic participation and empowerment through digital technologies as well. And we frame the whole questions around data, giving back democratic control to people and say, okay, data can really be a common good on top of which we want to build the innovation of the future. So we have created a kind of prototype and also digital rights and like a kind of prototype for future cities, which are sustainable, green and uh, uh, digital and more feminist, I would say. But what, what and, are you yeah. doing? What are you doing if you go to Poland? Not that they, well. I they, yeah. They, but, they go go away with your democratic ideas. They they don't democracy. because in Poland in Poland the feminist movement now is super strong. 
Yeah. It True. is super strong. They've been in the streets. They've been demonstrating. They need our support actually for those kind of rights based, you know, values and things. There are so many young poly Polish people that are looking yeah. at what yeah. we do and they want to get involved. So I'm sure uh, maybe not easy to deal with the government, <laughs> but definitely uh, involving communities and groups and people and innovators. Uh, in Poland. What, what, what makes you sleepless? How is you? What is your first step to in order to get rid of sleeplessness, if there is? Any? So uh, I think it's uh, my. <laughs> there are so many op great opportunities and so many great people always coming in. So we have um, thousands of of great talents every year. So in our programs and so we have every week another great company evolving so i'm constantly sleepless but that's i'm happy with that and so but what, what keeps me running and energized is to see these people and help these people really be successful and to to come up with with um yeah other new great companies like isa aerospace and silonis um, you name them and steffi also the second point what you mentioned with, with this uh, European roadshow. I think this is extremely important. And I think we, we should all engage more in that to really be uh, better bridge builders in, in Europe to these ecosystems. And I think this is it's a great, great task we should put on our list that we build yeah. these bridges and, and yeah, find these friends or build even stronger relationships to our friends at Alto or DTU or Milano and um, then help each other to build great local ecosystems, but then connect these local ecosystems Europe-wide and build great European teams. So this is then what, what uh, keeps me up for the next 10 years. <laughs> and I mean, if, if, Steffi, if we can be maybe realistic, because at the moment, obviously, talking about this can seem a bit uh, detached from people's life, because obviously, uh, we do have the urgency of uh, getting vaccinated, everybody, to get out as soon as possible from this uh, pandemic. And we know that the social and economic situation is very difficult. So when we think about companies and businesses, I mean, we are aware and we are very realistic with the situation. I mean, it's probably going to be one third of the uh, working uh, places that are going to be uh, kept. So at the moment, really, people are surviving because the government is uh, bailing them and is putting in the economy a lot of money. There is going to be very strong industry restructuring to be doing where this transformation towards digital and ecological transformation is going to be very important, but it is can be painful. So we need also to set up this network of solidarity and, you know, investing in education, in skills, in retraining and building this very strong societal backbone uh, with, you know, public, public health care and stronger cities and communities. I mean, I think we also need to do that uh, yeah. because it's going to be difficult, a difficult time. Absolutely, and get Francesca, rid of but we shouldn't wait to innovate because no, we, no. We, that's part uh, of the game. Yeah, and and so and I'm really happy what happened despite COVID nineteen that people continued being innovative and used all the digital tools and now we have we have seen great Europeans coming up even people haven't met physically but have met over the platforms and form teams, build prototypes together. And I think that's also a new reality and we, we should keep this pace up. And so I'm, I'm really astonished that in, in our ecosystem, we, we could, um, yeah, we had the same number of startups even uh, with COVID. And so we, we got in even more venture capital in the ecosystem. So over 1 billion US dollars, um, and, at the beginning of COVID-19, I thought, okay, now everybody, everybody is shutting down, but this didn't happen, and we as Europeans should be active and keep the pace. No. Helmut, I have a question for you. You are so familiar with the, and, and you, Francesca, as well, with the um, characters and personalities of European entrepreneurs. What's the difference of an... Um, American Silicon Valley entrepreneur and an European entrepreneur who wants to invent the world in a new way. Shall I, Francesco? Yeah, yeah, I leave this to you. <laughs> so 
So I think uh, the Europeans are uh, more like the details and are great engineers and uh, natural scientists. And so we, we love the details and work on our projects and our labs, whereas our American friends um, also have great ideas, are clever people, but they go out um, not after two years out of the lab, but maybe after two, two weeks. And so they are much better salesmen and um, mm -hmm. also often are much be better to, to sell this great large vision. And I think we Europeans, we have so many great ideas. We have so much competence. And it's, it's, so there's <laughs> so many opportunities. And uh, let's be more bold. Um, let's also communicate uh, this great vision mm -hmm. uh, more open and more actively. And um, yeah, uh, yeah, have the energy to, to go the next step. And then I think we will be successful. I, I've been contacted by many entrepreneurs, uh, European entrepreneurs, Italian, but not only, that were in the US, for example, or abroad to realize their projects. And when they knew that we were starting the, the Italian Innovation Fund and we were putting out uh, investment money, but also that we had the vision and the possibility, they contacted me back saying, you know, we would like to actually, uh, we want to have more diversity in the innovation ecosystem. We think it's a bit crazy that all the new products and things get decided here in Silicon Valley with like this view of the world. Of course, now Asia, uh, it's challenging that, but the idea that they had was more like reconnecting it to the culture, to the land, to the place, you know, creating these new spaces as we're talking about where they could expand their ideas and provide a platform with investment, but also with, you know, the ideas to prototype, make it real, get access to the network in order to, uh, you know, help you to set up your startup, to try it out, to... So they were basically very eager to do it in Europe. So I think actually there is this thing that when people are going abroad, but they're going abroad because they find it easier somehow to tap into the network and just do it and scale it. And, uh, and I think um, we have the possibility to get back a lot of these brilliant minds, a lot of these talented people, if we create the conditions to do it here. This is a wonderful last word. If we create the conditions. <laughs> <laughs> if, so let's make the if true. Helmut, what is your wish concerning the if? And so also not only that the, the, our entrepreneurs improve, but also all the stakeholders on, on the other side. So all the investors, all the supporters, all the suppliers, all the customers. and The media. The, in the media, yeah. The media. And also they, they should be more open and more support, uh, supportive. And just a, a little story. So there are so many German companies who love to go to Silicon Valley and they're always amazed uh, how great uh, the Silicon Valley startups are. And then they come back and there are also these great European companies. And sometimes actually the, the so-called Silicon Valley companies are German or, or, or Finnish companies, okay? And so they're much, so the, so the German companies are many times much more open if they have a Silicon Valley company in front of them than a European company. And so please be also more open for our own child, children. Yeah. But I mean, we also, I was, I was reading, I want to say so. Is that, is, do I have it here? Yeah. I mean, uh, can I make some advertising? Yeah, sure, 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 sure. Definitely. Uh, I'm in this like very, very great book. Uh, can you see the economics, the economy, of, of, economics of, of Martin of Sambu? Belonging. Yes, cool. the FT, yeah. And basically there is also a question of uh, trying to make our economy, trying to shift to this economy of belongings where mm. we make the economy work for the people, that people feel uh, somehow that they are, part, uh, they are part of it, that it delivers value to them. And obviously we have big fixes. I mean, the book talks about uh, Roosevelt uh, in the 20s, the democratic experimentalism. So the big macroeconomic reforms, but also how to make innovation happens from the ground up in order to to, to change things and uh, create less polarization because we do not want to feel populism again. 
I mean, let's don't forget that if people feel they are not part of this economy, they are, uh, you know, disenfranchised, they don't belong, they don't get a good, good jobs, they don't get their place in society. Yeah. Uh, we can have nationalism and populism again, so we have to move away from that kind of narrative. And I think, um, just to end with a positive note, we can turn things around for the better, I think. And the new European Bauhaus, or however we want to call it, should be about how it can be done. So it should be a way to do it. Uh, Brava. This is the, Brava. <laughs> the how <laughs> it can be done. Yes, it's on the how. It's on the how, and I'm looking forward to the next steps of the hows. Thank you so much. Thank yeah. you so much. This was a wonderful um, DLD sync conversation, and I hope that won't be the last. I hope we will have many more conversations. We will be the preachers, the evangelists of the hows in Europe, and. I'm looking forward to sitting with you in five years and do a, you know, we made it, we did it. It's the beginning I, I'm, of I'm, doing I mean, it. I, I mean for the innovation tour. Yeah. Super. By the way. Super. Yeah. I love you. See you soon. Thank ciao, you. Ciao. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a nice Bye. 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 Bye.